So Perfect. welcome everybody to the Lymph Balance Center's Summer Speaker Series. It is, oh my gosh, it's Thursday, the 29th of July. And we've had an amazing July so far with all of our speakers. We've had different topics all around the table. And tonight I'm really excited because my friend Kyle Marshall, who is with um, Media Lab YYC, is going to share some really great information with us about podcasting. If you don't know about the Summer Speaker Series and our upcoming speakers, I really encourage you to either go to our website, which is www.lymphbalance.com, or you can visit our Facebook page, which is Lymph Balance Center. And on there, you'll see all the events, upcoming speakers, the topics, et cetera, everything will be up there for you. And do the same thing you did this evening, which is just click on the link and make sure you register so that way you can join us and learn from some amazing uh, experts and people who are passionate in their industry, um, just giving us that ability to create a strong sense of community within the city. So um, I'm gonna pass this off. So I'd like to introduce everybody to Kyle Marshall. Thanks, Robin. Yes, um, I feel very honored to be here today and talking a little bit about one of my favorite topics, which is podcasting. Uh, I have put the title as podcasting yourself to a broader audience, but there's a few different things we're going to, excuse me, that we're going to go through here today, which is going to be kind of like a little tiny bit of like the history of podcasting, but how you can stand out, why you might want to use podcasting within your business those sorts of questions. Um, of course, if you do have questions, throw them into the chat and we can answer those uh, when we get to that slide. I also have an interesting setup going on here right now. So I have like another screen over here. So I might have to turn there occasionally just to make sure I'm on, on my talking points. So if I'm not looking directly at you, that is what's happening here in this case. Uh, but I want to jump right into it. So one of the, oh, let me see. There we go. Um, one of the questions I find that I get a lot when I talk about what it is that I do, which is helping people to podcast, recording, editing, publishing. One of the follow-up questions people often have is, is it too late to start a podcast? And my flippant answer is usually no. No, it's not too late to start a podcast. That being said, there are some things that we kind of need to think about before we jump in with both feet. You do have to kind of be intentional with what it is that you want to do. Uh, specifically, uh, as far as forethought goes, um, podcasts have kind of grown to become this great form to communicate something that you're super passionate about. One of the things that I love the most is that out of pretty much every area on the internet, podcasting is still this one thing that encourages long form discussion. So if you think about it, like if you are on Twitter, it's just very short, quick communications. Instagram is all about like those short little uh, photos or like a short video that you're gonna be watching there. YouTube occasionally you can have those longer videos if you are like, yeah, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna watch this thing for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes. But podcasting is great because it really allows us to lean in a little bit more. We can go a little bit deeper into that conversation. Uh, and because it is this, this audio only format, I find that it tends to require people to engage with it a little bit more. Like you're, you are really listening to what the people are saying and are not distracted by anything else that might not be going on in say like a video, for instance. And as such, they become this really interesting, intimate um, expression that I, I can just speak from my own experience that the podcast that I love the most, like I really do feel like a connection to the hosts. They don't know who I am at all, but I feel like I know them. And it feels like a great, you know, return to home every week when they release a new episode or every month when they release an episode. Uh, often I am actually listening with earbuds in. So it almost like feels like they're inside my head for, for great portions of that time. The other thing, and this might sound weird, but I also like the fact that you can engage with podcasts uh, while doing other things. Uh, and that's not to say like you're doing it so that you're not actually listening, but you, you can think about it as like I'm washing the dishes or walking the dogs or working out and you can still be listening to what is going on. Unlike some of the other things, like um, I don't, I can't necessarily be like reading a book or I can't necessarily be watching a video while I'm trying to do all those other things. 
it ends up not working out the best. So those are like the three big ones. Like they can be this intimate um, uh, expression. They encourage this long form talk and you can engage with them while doing other things. But that's all nice and good. However, if you are thinking about using podcasting, I think, like I said before, you need to be intentional. So number one, uh, you need to do a bit of research about what it is that other people in whatever niche that you happen to be going into, what are they doing? Um, as a good example of this, like let's, uh, because this is being hosted through like the Lymph Balance Center, let's say that that is the podcast that I want to start. I want to do something with the lymphatic system. It's probably good to go and see what other people are doing or if they are doing it and what it is. If you find out that like literally everybody is doing an hour long conversation with an expert in the field. And your goal is to be like, well, I really want to get the widest possible audience. Maybe you'll have to do something a little bit different to stand out instead of doing the same thing everyone else is doing. And asking that question, like, how am I going to stand out? Um, is it because I am bringing like just supreme expertise? Um, is there a, an even a, like a niche of a niche that I can start to get into? Um, we, those are kind of those tough questions that we have to go through. I also think it's good before like the recording starts or the planning starts, there is some time about like what your actual goals are. And for me, there's more than just two, but the two main ones I would say are, I want to get a large listenership so that I can like expand my influence, or I want to use podcasting as essentially like this mini one-on-one -on -one, um, time with people that you want to actually work with. You're inviting them onto your show so you can get a deeper relationship with them that you can then expand to outside of the podcast itself. So those are kind of those two, a few things that you actually have to think about. Now, when we think about podcasting, this is the symbol of Apple Podcasts, which has been around for a bit. Um, just as a quick question, and you can come off mute if you know, does anyone know why podcasts are called podcasts? Most people don't. <laughs> um, we can actually track it. We know exactly where the term started. It, it actually started in 2004 in a, in a Guardian newspaper article. So there was this journalist by the name of Ben Hammersley. And at the time, in 2004, um, I mean, the internet had been around for a while at that point, but that was really just at the point as it was cresting to be like the majority of North America had come online. And he was noticing that there was a lot of the people downloading audio broadcasts. These weren't like radio shows. There's people were actually recording audio, submitting it into uh, different websites that people could then download and listen to. And so we asked this question. It's like he noticed that this was going on. And so he flippantly suggested three options. He said, what should we call this? Should we call it audio blogging, guerrilla media, or podcasting? And it was that last one that really just gained traction. I think there's a couple different reasons why. I mean, the reason why he suggested podcasting was at the time, the vast majority of people were using iPods to listen to it. So it's a little portmanteau of iPod and then broadcasting. Um, but I think that's the biggest one. It sounds like broadcasting. So people are used to actually saying that word. That's my, that's my theory. I have no way to back that up. Um, but that stuck out. And then it was just one year later that then it was Apple who uh, included podcasts into the iTunes store. So it's just super simple to be able to go like, oh, I want to download a podcast, click. Okay, it's now on my iPod. Super simple. And away we went. Like they really did revolutionize the initial uptick in podcasts. Um, although if I'm going to be critical, they really didn't do anything with it for the next decade. But they did pioneer the idea of podcasts, uh, at least initially. Uh, so we're 17 years into this format here now, right? Uh, which seems like a long time. And yet at the same time, it is still very early days. So as an example, this is something that I grabbed off of this website and this um, kind of statistics firm called Statista. Uh, this is from last year. Uh, I think they just came out with their 2021. Um, and some of these numbers have moved slightly, but you can kind of see where podcasting is. And I find in very fascinating ways that like, I guess our English speaking countries 
uh, are not the top of who listens to podcasts in a Pacific month. Like South Korea, by far, like 58% of their population is listening to at least one podcast a month. And I find that that's so fascinating. So I always like to bring up this thing because you don't necessarily even have to think, oh, I need to do an English speaking podcast. If you know a different language and you think there's a way to like really uh, fit into a niche with a different language, like we can see here, <laughs> uh, Korean, Spanish, and Swedish. Those are your three big ones. Those are the top three. Uh, these are continually to, to move uh, um, uh, as, as the years go on. And so I guess the question then remains again, is it too late to start a podcast? And once again, very flippantly, I'm going to say, well, yes, but actually no. Um, I, I think that the, the biggest thing here is, as we saw in the previous slide, especially if we're looking at like Canada and the US, we're around that like 25 to 30% mark of people. There's a huge amount of people who don't engage with podcasts right now, which means there's a huge opportunity for growth. Maybe people have just not gotten that specific thing that they want to listen to into their feeds yet. Um, I think it does also require a little bit of education at the very outset. So people feel comfortable going and finding what they want to do. But the other big thing that I think about, and, and you see these numbers kind of thrown about, which is, you know, there's 600,000 podcasts on, on Apple Podcasts, uh, which is true. But I actually like to really break that down because, well, yes, there is 600,000 shows listed on that site. Uh, if, if you really delve into the numbers, like about 180,000 of those are actually still releasing new episodes. So automatically we're like dropping way down in numbers. Still a big number, of course, like 180,000 isn't anything to sneeze at. But then we can kind of take a look like, well, how many are actually in the niche that you were looking at going into? Um, and I'm going to say like conservatively from that number, probably like 18,000. And then I go even further, like, so of, of those 18,000, how many of them are actually good? Um, and I think we can probably drop that number down to around like the 100 mark. Um, so again, it takes some like research and take a look, like who is updating regularly? What are other people doing? Are these programs any good? Do, uh, what can I do better? Those sorts of things. And it becomes a lot more manageable than just that huge number of like, there's 600,000 shows out there when yes, but there's actually a lot more stuff going on inside of there. I think the other thing to think about here too is that this is often what people kind of think of a podcast is that, oh, it's like two people yelling at each other for like 45 minutes. And while certainly that is what some podcasts are, that is not what I would say like the vast majority of them are. And I would, I would even argue that the majority of them uh, are much different. Uh, I'm a huge movie fan as well. And there's this quote that Roger Ebert said years ago that I still think about um, where he says, for me, the movies are a machine that generates empathy, right? We get to see stories from people that uh, maybe we don't have an experience with or a different way of looking at things. And we can still feel for those people, understand them at a deeper level because uh, those movies can show us um, a light into those, those areas. Well, I like to like convert this into being, you know, podcasts are a machine that generates empathy as well. I think the best of them allow us to do that. We can learn something new. We hear a new story. We hear it firsthand. If we're interviewing someone, we allow this light to be shone on different areas so that we can start to understand um, and not be, you know, hold biases or hold these um positions that are maybe not 100% true. And I think the best of podcasting allows us to do it. When you yourself are deciding, oh, okay, well, you know what, I think that I can use a podcast then to expand my influence um, uh, or, ex or expand my, my network because I can go and like talk to these people that I want to be able to work with. I think a lot of this guy named Jeffrey Craner, um, he primarily works in fiction podcasts. So like writing stories, getting actors to act them out. The big one that you may have heard of is Welcome to Night Vale. He is one of the co-creators of that show. 
which is kind of like an X Files slash Twin Peaks type show. Like really weird things happen in this small town. Uh, but I, I happened to be at this conference here a few years ago where he was talking on stage and his position was um, podcasting specifically, although I think you can like broaden this out to any creative pursuit. But if your goal is like, I want to use this to uh, you know, generate an audience um, and become influential, there is three different things you have to be for that to happen. So you either have to be the first person to do it, you have to be the best person to do it, or you have to be different in some way. And so with podcasting, are you going to be the first person to do the show you're doing? Probably not, unless there is something like so unique that you have just discovered, but probably not going to be the first. Um, when you first start, are you going to be the absolute best? Again, potentially you might be like so um, charismatic that you become the best in your field. But again, probably not. But what you can absolutely be is somewhat different. And again, that goes back to like, maybe the format is going to be alternate to what everyone else is doing in your niche, or you have this very specific point of view that you want to get a hold of, or you're doing a niche of a niche that no one is really focusing on so that people that are looking for that information are kind of coming there a lot. Whatever that happens to be, and again, this is not necessarily like a super easy thing. Sometimes you have to discover like, what is this thing that I can be different, I can stand out with? That is what you kind of have to hold on to. There, I wish I could remember who said it. I always forget who said it. But there is this weird paradox too when you're creating something, which is that if you try to have like the most like broad general appeal, it actually is counterintuitively uh, doesn't connect with a lot of people, but by being like super specific and be like, this is my story or like, this is, um, uh, you know, this one person story and like going through like the minute details that can actually reach a lot more because people feel connected to that story or empathetic to that story and they engage with it a lot more. So, um, I often think back to this about trying to be different, trying to find what that different thing is. So as an example, I've been actually using this uh, for a while now, for the last few months. And maybe I should just create this show myself because I talk about it so often. But I think about something like, let's say you own a bakery, right? So I have a bakery and I think I might want to use podcasting to um, expand my influence, show like what I know about it. But I also want it to be a fun show that people are going to engage with and that I can maybe generate an audience with. So instead of it being like, I am Kyle, I love baking tarts and pies, and you should come and buy all of your baking stuff from me. Um, that might not work, but what you could do is being like, okay, why not do a show, which is all about uh, like individual pies and how they were created and then like how they have come into pop culture. Like who made the first cherry pie and why is there a song about it? Um, and why do people, uh, uh, you know, still consume it? Or like, what was the first apple pie? Like, who was that made? Why is it so connected with like Americana? I feel like there's a bunch of stories. You can go even to like the savory pies and stuff too. That sort of thing is going to be a lot more, um, uh, uh, be, be able to tell that story, being those specific stories is able to generate that audience because now I want to tune in next time. Like I, I want to know who like the history of blueberry pie because you're telling this in like a, a really cool and interesting way. So think about it kind of like that. Um, coming back to the actual podcasting itself. Um, this is very easy to get into the weeds like super quickly. So I'm going to try and keep this um, <laughs> kind of like uh, somewhat generalized as possible. But as far as like, okay, I, you know, buy the microphone, I've recorded this show, like, how do I get it to where I need it to be? Uh, podcasting is kind of this weird thing, in that it is not as straightforward. And this is where people kind of start to rip their hair out. It's not as straightforward as like a YouTube video where I go to YouTube, I upload the video, I know anyone with that link can go and view it. Or like I go to a Facebook, I upload a post, anyone in my circle of friends can now look at that post. Podcasting is different where you actually have to go to a different website, upload it to that website, and then tell like Apple, Google, Spotify, I've just uploaded an episode or a new show. 
please allow this to be on your platform. You actually have to apply to all the different platforms so that every new episode actually gets updated properly. So people often think like, oh, I go to iTunes or I go to Apple and I upload it there and then it's just available and it's not. You actually have to go in this roundabout way. But there's a lot of different websites out there. Like Anchor is one of the big ones right now, like a free service where you can upload audio to. It does all the heavy lifting for you. So they'll like put it onto all those different platforms. Uh, just be aware, like it is free. So as, as I always say, like when something is free, there's sometimes like the value of their tech support then for you is sometimes you don't get the most uh, amazing uh, help if something goes wrong. Um, but there's free options, there's paid options, there's a whole uh, bunch of ways to get it to where you need it to get to and then start like just uploading from there. It's really just that first time that gets confusing because once you've been approved, you're, you're easy sailing from that point. Every new episode will just go to anywhere that you need to go to. Um, uh, especially here. So I, I think the big cool, uh, the thing that I love coming back to here is that the number of people in the US that are listening to podcasts on a monthly basis keep increasing from, you know, uh, was that eight years ago, just over 10% to now we're crossing the 30% mark. And if I remember correctly, 2020 was like just under the 40%. So it's increasing as, as we go along. Um, uh, and I think that, that there's a huge level of like uh, expansion that's going to be going on, especially because of, of course, we have our smartphones, we have our computers, we have all this thing. Uh, but one of the biggest things in tech right now is smart speakers. So whether it's like Alexa or the Amazon Echo or a HomePod, whatever it happens to be, Smart speakers are getting into more and more people's homes. And it's as easy as being like, you know, hey, Alexa, play the latest Kyle's Pie podcast. And boom, it's going to be playing there for you automatically uh, without having to like, go and scroll and find what, what's going on. So to kind of wrap this all up then, my company is called Media Lab YYC. So how can I help you out? <laughs> I guess is the question, right? We've talked about the kind of history of podcasting, what it is, um, where we're kind of at in, in the, the evolution of podcasting itself. And I think also we've talked a little bit about why I find at least podcasting such a great medium to, to use. We do three things uh, at Media Lab. Um, we essentially do this. I'm going to go through all three. So there's the what. Like, so what actually do we do? Well, as I always tell people, we can be as hands-on or as hands-off as you want me to be. So whether that's you want to come in, I have a studio space, so you want to use that to actually record something in. You want me to help you edit it. You want some help like coming up with ideas. Do you need some help actually publishing the show? I can actually help out with all of that along the way. Or, and I help a lot of clients like this, they're completely comfortable recording things on their end. They just want help like, just edit it for me and publish it for me because I don't want to take the time out of my day to actually do that. Um, especially if you're new to audio editing and you want to clean that up about a bit, like, you know, clean up the awkward pauses, get out some of those filler words that kind of um, break the, the conversation uh, a bit too much. My, the rule of thumb is that for however long the recording is, it's going to be about two to three times that length to actually edit the episode. So like if it's an hour, it's going to be two to three hours to actually go through the editing process. And as uh, if you're running your own business, sometimes like I don't have that time in my week to do that. So that's what I can take over for you. Um, and then, like I said, if you just want to go and uh, consult, find out what ideas there are, um, try and, and figure out what the best options as far as uploading it are, all that stuff I can help out with. Uh, there's also the how. So there's, of course, like the the, the pre-production, the production, and the post-production. I always break it out into those three. So that pre-production time is, yeah, really spent like, okay, let's find out what niche you want to be in. Let's figure out what it is and how you're going to actually be different. Um, take some time to figure out what you want the actual like um, artwork to be on your podcast, because every podcast actually does need a piece of artwork to go along with it. Uh, what you want the name to be, make sure someone hasn't taken that already. So all these things we have to make sure we go through and get that all done. The production, like actually recording the episode uh, that I can, if you're going to record in my space, I can be on hand. So I'm listening in, making sure things are recording properly. Maybe asking you to like rephrase a question at the end, just to get 
uh, to clean that up a little bit. Um, all those good things to make sure that the recording is like as clean as we, we can possibly get it. And I can take that and like take out any background noise, make you sound like super smart. And that's something over words. Um, like I say, cut out dead space, all that good stuff. And then the post-production actually getting it to where it needs to be so that you, like I told you, don't have to rip your, your hair out. I think the most important thing is the why. Like I have already talked about this previously in this presentation, but I honestly do feel so honored to help people record their shows. I've been a part of so many fascinating conversations that without me doing this for a job, uh, I would never have been a part of. And I feel like so, it feels so cool to be like, oh, that's really neat. Or like, oh, I heard this story that was really amazing and so like um, uh, meaningful to me. And being able to like figure that out for you and set up your mission and making sure that you're attaining your goals is like one of the best parts of my job. So that's what I get to do. Um, the last three things I guess I will just uh, finish off here with now, like these are the three pieces of advice, which is like, I would start now if you're interested in it, like start planning it, figuring out what you wanna do, think of how you're gonna be different and then empathy is your friend. So I am gonna now open it up to questions. If there's any questions people have written out. There's been some really good comments, but I don't know if I've not. Well, I think a lot of our questions were about the different kinds of pies and how oh, that's going to yeah. impact life. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's figure out the history of mincemeat. I seriously, I think that's one of those worst names. Like who came up with that? <laughs> I don't know. I know. Right. Um, I did want to know though, um, can you add intro and like, exit music? I've been listening to some podcasts and oh, I'm like, yeah. that sounds so profesh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I have definitely access to um, different platforms so I can find like the best type of music that you want to use. Um, unless you do have like a really cool music friend who can do it for you. Yeah. Like most people can go find that perfect piece of music for your intro, outro, um, or any like other interstitials you want to have uh, in the middle. Um, are you able to see the, the comments there, Kyle, or no? I am not. No, oh, that's okay. So Joanna has a question. Of, can you also cut our podcast into smaller sections so we can use the mm. same content on a variety of different platforms? 100%. I actually really love that idea too. Whether it's like, you know, um, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, whatever it happens to be. Some of those platforms have like a, a limit for as, how long it can be. But um, yeah, let's cut out like a really cool minute long part of the conversation and post that to Twitter that people can listen to or like this five minute chunk is like fascinating. We can put that up there too. Um, I can also offer and help out with like transcriptions if you needed it to, which, may which is great because then you can like take just that transcription, turn that into a blog post if you wanted to uh, or sections of it into a blog post. Um, or even use that uh, if you wanted to make your own like short videos of like, okay, I want the the, the actual words that come up as people are talking in, in the video, because it is normally like an audio only format. Cool. Does anybody else have any questions? I know I've spent a lot of time in the last while, like since we first met and learning more and more about podcasts that I've started to do more research mm -hmm. about how many other people are talking about lymph and if it's mm -hmm. even something that, and it's, you know, it's a specialized thing, but it's true. Like there's so many different yeah. people, topics and it's just crazy. Are they from all over the world too? Yeah. Well, there's, well, you know, our stuff sort of originated. There's a lot of origination in like Germany and France, et cetera but mm. definitely coming more from the U S interesting. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Does anybody else have any questions while we have Kyle actually live, like right there, you can physically ask the man and he can answer your questions. <laughs> it's always different when you send an email, you're like, I hope I'm getting the person I'm sending it to and not their assistant. That's right. That's right. So I will just put this up here too. Like yeah. if you do want to contact me here after the fact, these are the two best ways, the uh, business phone and then my uh, work email address that you can send things to. I'll make sure that that's also put in the um, description for the YouTube video as well as when I put it up. So that way it's an easy link oh, yeah. people can connect through and stuff like that. So I love this. So it's funny because like I've seen you do a shorter talk and then I've also... Yes we've had so many phone conversations and I've seen like, you know, the, 
the paperwork, the breakdown and everything. And every time I look at it, I'm like, oh man, I didn't think about that. Like there's so much to it. There is. Yeah. I think that um, because when you are maybe just like a consumer of a podcast, it feels like, oh, like you just like, you know, jump online, you have a conversation with a person or a friend. Um, but then it's like, oh, okay, but you have to plan that and like carve out the time of day and make sure the recording is actually happening. And then after the fact, I should cut it up and then, oh, I have to actually get it up somewhere. So it, it kind of like snowballs into like a little bit of work. Um, that's why I want to scare people off is like, it's so much work that you shouldn't even try, but it's, it's a little bit more than me like, oh, I just like talk for 45 minutes and click on upload. It's a, it's a little bit uh, more involved than that. I'm sure there's people who do though. Who oh, I'm just sure. go on yeah. and just start like rambling on and you know, I'm yeah, sure they those, don't those do the, so well. Well, those are the podcasts I listen to. I'm like, you could probably cut it, cut that out. <laughs> you know, probably didn't need to have this whole diatribe that you included here in the middle. Absolutely. Well, Kyle, I seriously really appreciate that you were able to come and join and, and do this presentation tonight. It was really good. I love all the details and so on. And it just makes yeah. so much sense. And it's, it's such a different world compared to like, you know, what, well, even what I grew up with and, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube sort of took everybody by storm, but then everyone's like, well, what about podcasts? I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't even considered podcasts. Yeah. So. I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing. And I guess just to reiterate one of the points I made kind of at the beginning, I, I really do think that podcasting, as far as like, if it is an extension of your business, there's kind of like two avenues you can go down, right? Like I am doing this because I want to expand my influence and grab like a really large audience. So that is like really gets your creative juices flowing because you really do want to make something that is not um, like so uh, like, it's like, this is only for like people who live in Kensington and Calgary. Like it's like, that might be a little too small to like, uh, to broaden out, um, uh, especially going to like, generate a huge influence so it's like that's why i always go to my pie ideas like oh yeah like anyone in the world could enjoy this if the storytelling is good enough so that's one way but the other way is like really don't um discount like people love being thought of as experts and so like if you're in an industry like a good example is let's say that i'm like a wine merchant right one of the greatest things to do if I'm selling wine is like, oh, I should really get into like event planners or wedding planners so that I am like their number one choice to come and buy wine from. So why don't I start a podcast about like wedding planners or planners in general um, and invite the people that I really want to work with, right? So still have a, a show that's informative and interesting, invite those on. You now get that one-on-one -on -one time for like at least that 30 minutes to an hour. And then even after the podcast is done, like really deepening that relationship, like what are your pain, like as you're packing things up, like what is your pain points with like your wine merchants and then showing them why you are like a better option to do that. So there's these other ways you can utilize podcasting in, uh, in your business. You're like, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. if you're not working, you're just sitting there thinking about what your next podcast could be because you always oh come gosh, up with these yeah. and me I, like i love the one about the paint colors and then yeah uh now the pies i'm going to totally be trying to find a baker who's going to start doing this so um i want to know about pies now. it, it is and my natural pastime of like thinking of uh different podcast ideas that i'll never do myself but i think other people <laughs> should do i love it i love it well i really appreciate that you were able to find time and help hang out with us and and help out with the summer speaker series and i know that yeah. there were people who weren't able to make it tonight but i'm really grateful that we we're able to record and um hopefully others can benefit from all this as well so cool thank cool. you so much thanks so much kyle